Today we continue with learning of the Simpson's rules and we'll be using Simpson's rules to calculate the center of flotation of an enclosed space. So you should have been watching my previous videos on Simpson's rules when we learned how to calculate the area as well as the volume of an enclosed space. Today's focus is using the Simpson's rules to calculate the center of flotation of the centroid of an enclosed space. I'll give you the links to all my previous videos on ship stability in the description section below. I'll advise you watching those videos to get a good understanding of the topic of ship stability before you watch this video. However, if you do have a good understanding of ship stability, please go ahead and watch this video and understand how to calculate the centroid of an enclosed space or a center of flotation of an enclosed space using Simpson's rules. So we will be solving a couple of different types of questions here today. So question number one is that we have to calculate the area. So this will be a good revision for you to understand how to calculate the area of an enclosed space and the center of flotation. So COF stands for center of flotation of a ship's water plane whose half breadth at 10 meter intervals from the aft are given as you see here. So when you see half breadths, that means uh, when you see half breadths here, so area then has to be multiplied by 2 to find the area as I'll show you below. And the 10 meter intervals, the 10 meter intervals is also referred as H. This is uh, when the uh, length of the enclosed space has been divided into equal, equal spaces. Uh, and the this is the equal intervals between the ordinates given to you in the question as well all right i'll show you through a diagram so if you can see the diagram here you can see the diagram here i've tried to uh, make this diagram here so that you can visualize what's going on here it's not made to scale so don't take the measurements too seriously but you can see where edge is so this each of this edge here all this edge so the enclosed space length here has been divided into equal intervals which makes the h equals to 10 meters so this is what the 10 meters is referring to and you can see the ordinates are drawn as well so you start with a zero and you end with a zero and the mid ordinates in the middle have some values all right and you basically have to find the centroid of this place and or this rather this water plane area and the half breadths are given to you that means it's only half the breadths it's not the full breadths so you can imagine that this structure has another structure like this attached to it and that will give you the full breadth so whenever you find the area we just multiply it by two so that we can get the full area because this is just showing us the half breadth it's not showing us the full breadth of the space all right so let's start with the solution here the solution is that you have to make a few columns you have to make five columns in the first column you have to put the values of the half ordinates which are given to you starting from zero and ending with zero as given in the question all right then you count the ordinates you count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so if there are ten ordinates you can rule you can use rule number one for simpson so you can use rule number one for simpson's rule number one so when you use simpson's rule number one you can basically write down the simpson's multiplier so for this you must have seen all my previous videos please see them and you know how to write the simpson's multipliers if there are 10 ordinates so when there are 10 ordinates we write one three three two three three two three three one are the simpson's multipliers all right so sm stands for simpson's multipliers for rule number one then just multiply each one of them with each other all right as you see i have multiplied each one of them and then you get the product in this each case you get the product write down the product when you write down the products add all of them together and you will get the sum of products in this case the sum of products or sop is sop for of area is 141 all right then you write so this column is done as well then you have the fourth column where you will write about the lever about aft lever about aft means the distance that each ordinate is from the aft so if we say this is the aft in the diagram you can see this is the aft here so you can see the ordinate of zero is from zero distance and that's why zero h zero h is basically zero right this is also equal to zero then the ordinate of six which is this ordinate here you can see ordinate of six is at a distance of one h right then ordinate of eight is at a distance of two h ordinate of 8.5 is at a distance of 3 times h 3h ordinate of 8.5 again is a distance of 4h and ordinate of 7.5 is at 5h so you can see how this is proceeding so this is how i have written the lever about aft this is basically the distance of the ordinate from the aft so you can see this is distance of the half ordinate from aft as shown in the diagram as well all right then all you have to do is basically multiply these two these two each other so you will multiply column number four three by column number four all right so this is you 
then you get the answer here is 0 this is 18 by h is 18 h 24 by 2 is 48 h so on and so forth once you get all the products add them up again together and you will get the sum of products for the centroid so sum of products sop for calculating the center of rotation all right so let's calculate the area first so to calculate area the formula for simpson's rule one is basically three by eight h multiplied by sum of products this is the formula but because like i said it's half breadth when it's half breadth so you have to multiply it by two and this is why this two is there all right so put the values here you know the value of h is 10 sum of products is 141 for area so i have written that here again so you can see it all right so area will then be equal to 2 by 3 by 8 which is part of the formula then 10 is the h h is 10 141 is sum of products as you have calculated above and then simply just multiply it and you will get the answer as 1057.5 meter square is the area of this enclosed space all right then we have to find the position of the center of flotation from aft so to do that just divide the sum of products for center of flotation as you have calculated above that is 564h and divide it by the sum of the products of area so sum of the products of area and this is sum of the products for center of flotation as from above you can see 564h divided by 141 where h is of course equal to 10 meters as given in the question put in the value here and you will get the answer is 40 meters from the aft perpendicular is your center of flotation so this space will have a center of flotation 40 meters from the aft perpendicular so if you go back to the diagram and where h is equal to 10 meters you can see center of flotation will be exactly at 10 20 30 40 it will be somewhere here all right or it will be somewhere if we consider the full space it will be somewhere here because this is about 40 meters so this becomes f center of flotation all right so let's go into the second question now so question number two is slightly different from question number one here again the half breadths are given to you so that means only half the breadth so if you have to find the area you have to multiply it by two and this time it's a transverse shaped watertight bulkhead it's not a longitudinal shape it's a transverse shaped and the ordinates are given at two meter intervals so this two meter intervals then becomes your h this h is two meters that is the equal intervals so from the top at two meter intervals the ordinates are given to you then below this shape below the watertight bulkhead is the, below the lowest semi-ordinate that is 3.8 meters of the semi-ordinate is a rectangular appendage of 7.6 meters breadth and 1 meters height you have to find the total area of the bulkhead and the distance of its geometric center from the bottom of the appendage all right so the best thing to do in any kind of numerical question is to draw what you can visualize so always draw the more you draw the more you can visualize the more you can understand the concepts so don't start off with the question without drawing it because once it's clear in your head through the drawing on what you have to find out it gets easier to solve the question again the drawing doesn't have to be wonderful you can see my drawings are pretty ugly here and the drawings are not great but uh, it helps me to visualize on what i have to do right so basically what this drawing is showing you the transverse bulkhead at the different ordinates and g here the this g here is the geometric center or gc of the total shape all right of the total shape that means it includes the watertight bulkhead as well as the appendage all right g2 is the geometric center only of the bulkhead all right and here g1 you can see here g1 g1 is the geometric center of the appendage all right so i'll show you why all this is important because we have to deal with the bulkhead separately to that of the appendage because the bulkhead will be using the simpson's rule but the appendage will be using rules of mathematics all right so let me show you this is how it you should visualize it so this is the bulkhead this, on top is the transverse bulkhead and on the bottom is the appendage and you can see the dimensions i have mentioned the dimensions there as well i have mentioned the ordinates h again is h, every h is equal to two meters right so again in this case because we count the ordinates so the first column will be the ordinate column 
so we'll count the ordinates 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so when there are seven ordinates we can use either rule uh, rule 2 all right we can use rule 2 and we'll count the ordinates 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so whenever seven ordinates are there we can use rule 2 and we can also use rule 1 but i thought i will use uh, a, a different rule because then it uh, it's a good revision for you of the rule uh, 2 as well. Alright, so when it's uh, 7 ordinates, you can actually use either rule 1 or rule 2 uh, because uh, both the rules can be applied. Alright, but in this case, actually I have used rule 1 only. I'm sorry, I have not used rule 2. I have used rule 2 in the top column. So I have actually written it in reverse. So I apologize for my mistake. So this is actually, this is actually rule number 2 because there are 10 ordinates 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 that's right there are 10 ordinates so we'll have used rule 2 and my apologies all right my apologies my sincere apologies to you and then in question number 2 i've written it in reverse this is actually rule number 1 all right this is rule number 1 but again like i said before when there are 7 ordinates you can use either rule 1 or rule 2 uh, both would have been correct you will get slightly different answers but both are correct so because I used rule 2 in the first question, I thought I'll use a different rule in the second question. So I hope I didn't confuse you guys. Uh, my apologies if I did. Alright, so we have the Simpsons multipliers for rule number 1 here because there are 7 ordinates. And then just multiply the ordinates with the Simpsons multiplier. And you will get the product for areas. Alright. So 10 by 6 by 1 is 10.6, so on and so forth. 10 by 4 is 40, so you get product for it, yes. So in this case, when you add all the products together, you add them up together, you get the sum of products for area. Right? 143.2. Then again, this is only the transverse watertight bulkhead, okay? We are not considering the appendage here. Then we find out the lever from bottom for each ordinate's distance from the bottom. So you can see the ordinate of 10.6 is basically 6 by h distance from the bottom if you don't include the appendage okay so appendage not included appendage is not included all right so the ordinate of 10 meters is about 5 h 9.3 is 4 h so on and so forth right so you can see in the diagram itself like i explained the previously then just multiply each product of area by the lever from bottom when you do that, you get product of moments. And you get product of moments, add these product of moments together. And you get sum of products for the center of rotation of the watertight bulkhead. So sum of products for geometric center of bulkhead. Okay, so this is only dealing with the bulkhead. I have still not considered the appendage here. So let's find out the area of the total shape now. When you find out the area of the total shape, you first find out the area of the watertight bulkhead. So the area of the watertight bulkhead will be using Simpson's rules. The formula would have been h by 3 multiplied by sum of products. But because these are again half breadths, you will multiply the whole area by 2 to get the full area. Because if you don't multiply it by 2, you only get half the area. If you multiply by 2, you get full full area because we are using only half ordinates. All right? So then h is equal to 2 meters. You know it's given in the question. Sum of products 143.2 will come here. Just find out the answer. This is 190.9 meter square is the area of the bulkhead only. Then you find out the area of the appendage. Area of the appendage, the dimensions are 7.6 meters of breadth and 1 meters of height. It's a rectangle. Just multiply breadth by height or length by breadth what we say. So 7.6 multiplied by 1 is 7.6 meters square. Okay, so you can see the shape here you can see the shape here this is 7.6 and 1 meter it's a rectangle shape so you have two values so if you add the two values together you get the area of the total shape so 190.9 plus 7.6 will give you the total area area of the total shape this includes includes the appendage as well all right includes appendage and watertight bulkhead right so we added we found the area separately and added the two to find the total area then you have to find the position of the geometric center and we do something very similar that we did before we have to find the geometric center of the individual shapes and then find out the geometric center of the total shape so we have to find gc1 and gc2 so gc1 or g1 rather 
in the diagram so g1 to find the g1 you will take the sum of products all right sum of products of gc of the bulkhead from above which is 488.8 h and then you will multi divide it by sum of products by area sum of products of area which is 143.2 then you will add 1 meter to it why is that so if you go back to the diagram you can see here g2 so this is g2 we are finding g2 so you can see g2 here g2's distance is from not from the bottom of the bulkhead it should be from the bottom of the appendage as well so if i just divide the sum of products of the geometric center of the bulkhead that is 488.8 h divided by 143.2 will give me the height of the geometric center g2 from the bottom of the bulkhead not from the bottom of the appendage to get the g2 from the bottom of the appendage i have to add the one meters of height of the appendage as well that's why i've added one meter so you can see this one meter is the height of the appendage that i have added all right so we put the value of h as 2 this is 2 is h 488.8 by 2 divided by 143.2 plus 1 is 6.8 plus 1 is 7.8 meters this is the position of g2 from bottom of appendage all right then we have to find position of g g1 basically we have to find g1 g1 is very simple you have the you can see the appendage here its height is one meter the geometric center will be in the center here it will be half of one meter which is 0 0.5 meters that's why g1 will be one meter divided by two half of the height which is equal to 0 0.5 meters and this is also from bottom of appendage all right so to find g which is the geometric center of the total shape so geometry for the shape which is equal to g you will take 190.9 which is the area of the area of the bulkhead multiplied by the geometric center okay so this is area of bulkhead bh multiplied by the geometric center which is g2 and then this is area of appendage right multiplied by position of g1 divided by the total area so this is the total area of the shape will give you the geometric center g position of g from bottom of appendage all right so that's how it becomes simple so when there's a when there's a combination of shapes like this question here you have to deal with it individually and then towards the end you can put it all together so find out the area of the bulkhead using simpson's rules find out the area of the appendage using geometric principles principles of area calculation and then use the lever of find out the position of the geometric center of the bulkhead separately from that of the appendage and then use the moments about the geometric center to find the overall geometric center of the total shape all right so i hope this video was useful to you guys to understand how simpson's rules can be used to calculate the center of flotation or the centroid of a shape if you have any other questions in mind just give me the whole question just write down the whole question in the comment section i'll be happy to solve those questions um, and if um, look forward to your feedback as well thank you for watching guys and thank you for subscribing keep subscribing because then you get notification about my future videos as well i'll see you soon with my next video guys all the best with your studies and see you soon